Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that exercise of making an employee class and two classes that inherit this diagram. The employee is our base class and inheriting from him are two specialized classes, the salaried employee and the contract employee. Our employee class is what is called a virtual class, meaning that it should never be directly instantiated. It has an initializer. The initializer will be run, but only when one of these two are instantiated. Let's look at our main. We're going to make a salaried employee, Joe. First, we go to the salaried employee class and look for a magic initializer. Since there is not a magic initializer, we go up to the employee class and there we find it. So we put our name in ourself and our pay rate in ourself. Our next call is to print name. So Joe is ourself. We go into our salaried employee and there's no print name. Therefore, we go to the employee class, and there is print name, and that's what it does. Our next call is to calculate pay in this string. We are going to call calculate pay, Joe. So we go in to our salaried employee, because that's what Joe is, and we find calculate pay. A one came in here, and so we do the calculation of how much money he gets for one week. And now let's give Joe a raise. Give raise two. We go to the salaried employee, always starting in the instantiating class. And there is no give raise. So we go up to the employee, go into give raise. And we do this little calculation to raise his pay rate by 1%. Okay, now let's make a contract employee. We're going to make a contract employee, Susan. And she gets $100 an hour. Contract employee. There is no magic initializer. Once again, we do her instantiating in the employee class, even though her instantiating class is the contract employee. We go up here, and we put in her name and her pay rate. The next thing she does is print her name. Well, there's no print name and contract employee, so it goes and finds it in the super class print name. There, she does it. We see we'll give her a raise, 2%. All right, she's doing well. There is no give raise here. Therefore, we go to the employee class, and that's where we give raise. Next, we print her name. There's no print name in the salaried employee. Therefore, it goes into the employee and a prints name. Next, we do her calculate pay again. And remember, she has a 2% raise. Calculating her pay is found right there in the salaried employee. So you can see that the interpreter is going back and forth this way and that way. But the code is beautiful. The next thing we're going to call is we're going to make Fred an employee who gets a hundred. hundred what? We don't know. We go looking for the employee and we find it. We set the name and the pay rate and that looks okay. But when we say calculate pay, we go looking in here for calculate pay because he's an employee and an employee doesn't know anything about salaried employee and contract employee. This class knows nothing about its subclasses. So it crashes. We'll get an attribute error because there's no calculate pay for an employee. Now it would be nice of us to check the class here, the instantiating class here, and raise an error if somebody tried to instantiate an employee object directly. Okay, that's it. That's the basic idea of inheritance. I hope you see the power of it. I'll see you in the next lab.